All right. So first of all, let's talk about the breakdown of the task for writing. So basically, you have three tasks in three essays, uh, five questions actually, but three, three essays, just three essays to write. And the level of the essays, they vary from E2, B1 and B2. So uh, I think most of you are actually aware that we are expecting uh, all SPM candidates to graduate with at least a B1 level, okay? So that would be the third level out of all six levels in English, the CEFR. Okay, so uh, as you are aware, it uh, part one is a short message and that is the easiest of all. So I have been telling all my students and basically everywhere we went to give talk, we actually uh, reminded everybody that part one would be the part where you need to score the highest. Why? Uh, it would be because it's the easiest question of all. And that is also when uh, everything should be uh, easy to score, okay? So let's talk about the assessment criteria overall, okay? So as you know, we are using C, C, A, O, and L in order to assess your, criteria, uh, your essay writing. Uh, and help me out here. All right, and um, we are just going to go through this very quickly, but you can just uh, ask the questions. Um, uh, we have one question there from Amna. Can you all see the slide? Yeah, can, can you all see the slide actually? Oh. Some say yes, some say no. Okay. No, okay, it's okay. I'll just. Okay. Okay, let's try to refresh. Perhaps stop sharing first. I'll stop sharing and share again, okay? Okay. All right, how about now? Okay, how about now? Can you all see the slide now? Nurin uh, Fadlin. Okay, good. All, all right. right. Okay. Okay. So going back to what we said earlier, so these are the four things that you should be aware of, okay? Mm -hmm. Because these are the four things that the, the examiners are going to find in your essays, yep. all three of them. It's just that uh, the strictness level, mm -hmm. uh, that the... The, the level of strictness uh, would vary according to the part that we, uh, the examiners are marking. Okay, so I think it would be actually wise to start with uh, understanding what the four elements actually mean so that you know what you have to deliver in your essays. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, like uh, teacher Ika mentioned earlier, uh, as of now, you should already know the level of difficulty between part one to part two and also part three are going to be different, right? So um, understanding these four different assessment criteria is very important, right? Let's talk about the first one, um, content, right? I think everybody knows in order to score five full mark for contents, you have to uh, answer all the questions asked in the rubric, okay? However, at the same time, you need to make sure all your ideas, all your contents are fulfilling the task. And the ideas that you are writing in your essays, be it email, part two or part three, are actually relevant to the task. So if the question is asking about um, your opinions regarding uh, maybe an issue or uh, a suggestion perhaps, right? So you need to make sure the ideas that you are writing is not or are not swaying from the task, right? And at the same time, when you write your ideas, you have to make sure that it is fully informative, that 
you have to imagine it this way when the examiner is um, marking your essays they will not have uh, questions when they look look at your uh, ideas or your contents so an example of, for this one is um all right this is taken from spm trial Klantan 20, 2021 yeah Klantan spm trial 2021 all right so the question for the email was um i'm going to visit you in Klantan next week and can you suggest me a place that i can go when i am in Klantan all right so one of my previous students actually answered this way he wrote i think you should consider going to the beach when visiting Klantan which is actually answering the question right however it is not fully informative like when i was marking this um, particular essay i was asking myself yes which uh, beach exactly because in Klantan we have uh, many um, local mm -hmm. beaches like um, Pantai Irama, Pantai Cahaya Bulan and whatnot, right? So make sure it is fully informative, okay? okay. And would you like to... Uh, I think there is something that you should actually remember because sometimes uh, what we have seen happening among uh, actually proficient and good writers is that uh, they have mistakenly or actually carelessly mm -hmm. skipped some questions and uh, this can easily happen to anybody. So that is why I think although the question is, you know, part one, something that is supposedly something so easy and it, it's something that you can write, you know, in, in a blink of eye. But sometimes we tend to actually uh, mislook and misread the question. So that is something that you actually need to uh, be careful with. So it is worthy the time to actually take note of how many questions do you need to answer, uh, perhaps highlight them or perhaps even number them so that you are aware all the tasks are fulfilled. Okay, right. because content is the easiest part to score, right? Okay, so we don't want you to lose marks there. Okay, moving on. All right, so criteria number two is uh, communicative achievement. And um, it's different to content, the one that we discussed earlier where content is mainly about your ideas. Communicative achievement or CA, on the other hand, is about how you convey your ideas to the examiners or to the readers. So it will be related to number of things, for example, the format and convention. Like when you are writing English essays, you have to make sure you follow the correct format depending on the, question, uh, on the questions that you are answering, okay? and in terms of convention it is also different throughout uh, the questions uh, the selection of questions you can you should be able to clearly see the different convention for different types of F essay for example if you are writing um, perhaps part, part two you would sound very informative uh, very de descriptive but on the other hand when you switch to answering maybe story or narrative right you have to change the tone and also the convention okay um element number two under ca would be register and i kept telling my student register is actually very easy to score it's just uh, we have to prepare so you all have to prepare beforehand whenever you look at the questions you will get the idea of the topic for example uh, part two essay let's say if the question is asking you about maybe working part-time right so you should have some words related to working part-time in um, in your mind so when you write your essays you want to include all the words to make sure that most of the words are topically related because register here refers to the words that you want to uh, register in your essay you want to use in your essay Okay, and then number three would be tone. Tone is quite easy to understand as well. Uh, I would love to give, uh, to use email as an, uh, as an example. Okay, so when you write email, normally you will sound very friendly and very informal, right? You might include some um, contraction. For example, you will write don't, can't, I can't wait to see you, for example. 
But when you switch to writing something very formal, like a report or article, your tone should also change because the uh, questions for report normally ask you to address your report to your principal, right? So you need to be very formal there. You cannot be too friendly and, um, you know, change all the words into formal uh, lexis or chunks, right? And then number four is complexity of ideas. When you write, uh, I think every student have uh, they, they have a different uh, style of delivering or writing the ideas to, to present to the examiners. Sometimes or most of the times, the students will list out the ideas one by one. So it will sound like a sequence. So uh, this is actually good. But if you keep doing this, there is uh, nothing special about your essay. So you might want to switch a little bit or here and there. For example, instead of just merely listing, first you do this and then you do this and then this happened. Okay, like uh, let's look at this simple sentence. Uh, last week, we went to a night market. There were many food stalls. I bought chicken rice, takoyaki and some drinks. Then I finished them all. I went home feeling full and satisfied, right? So when you look at this, it's, it, it is telling the sequence of events. Like when we arrived, this happened, and then this happened, and then this happened, and then we went home, right? So instead of writing this way, maybe you want to include some element of embedded idea. In Malay, we call uh, idea tersurat or tersirat, right? So we can change this. We can write, last week, uh, we went to a night market where there were many food stalls. We went to all the stalls and then we went home with a full happy tummy. So the last sentence there, we went home with a full happy tummy, um, contains like the, an embedded idea that this person bought a lot of food and finished them all. And he went home feeling uh, full and happy. So it must uh, the food should be very delicious and um, fulfilling, okay? So the idea of complex or conditional or hypothetical. And number five is about sustaining readers' uh, interest. Uh, for some students, they might say this is quite hard to achieve. However, there are two easy ways, actually. The first step is you have to make sure you reduce the number of simple errors in your essays. For example, um, things like spelling mistakes, um, past tense or present tense, this kind of uh, simple things that could have been fixed beforehand. Um, um, step number two is you have to make sure when you write your ideas, your topic sentences, they should be very clear and straightforward. So. Uh, it, it's not something young berbelit belit lah, right? Okay, mm. teacher, would you but, like to continue? Mm -hmm. uh, basically, I think for CA, you have to ensure that the clarity of the message is conveyed, uh, is assured. Mm. Meaning to say, we want somebody to, we want our essay to be easily understood by everybody. Uh, and it's not in the sense that you are using very simple language mm. and very simple uh, and basic vocabulary, but the fact that um if you are able to use uh precise words to convey what you are saying for instance when we are referring to the oxygen tank or or uh, an equipment for mm -hmm. diving then you should say oxygen tank or, or goggle instead of saying oh i put on a uh, something that looked like a glasses yeah. uh, and went into the water with uh, a huge cyl uh, cylindrical mm -hmm tank behind me so that is causing the readers to be having questions about your essay yeah. so basically what we want is that uh, allowing our reader to easily understand our essay without having to stop or even pause in order to try to digest whatever you are saying mm -hmm. so hence the importance of ensuring minimal mistakes with your grammar and also using the correct words mm -hmm. to deliver your ideas okay hence why um we would like you to 
make sure that when you are choosing a topic to answer, then choose something that you are familiar with instead yes. of something that you would be struggling to find words mm -hmm. to express your ideas. Okay, perhaps uh, if it's just for a culture, then you can just simply talk about our local culture, like uh, making ketupat uh, on Raya Eve, instead of talking about something that is so foreign and something that is so um, hard to, to explain. Okay. Next, the third criteria would be organization. So organization would be easy. It's how we link our ideas between our sentences and also between the paragraphs, okay, in, or, in order to ensure the cohesion, okay? So basically, we have to, I would refer to uh, the essay that has a poor connection, poor cohesion as uh, something that is a bit jumpy. So that means uh, you don't properly give us the link when you write sentences. You can write sentences, you can explain, but then we don't see clear link between one sentence and the sentence after or before. So that is something that we have to look at. Mm. Okay, in fact, since primary school, we have been learning about conjunctions, right? Okay, so those are called as linkers, the fanboys. So these are basic ones. Uh, because we are already graduating with uh, 11 years of schooling, of learning uh, formal English education, then we have to also showcase our ability in using cohesive devices accurately. So it's just like in Bahasa Melayu, we have the kata hubung. But the kata hubung is so basic, right? But we also have, at the same time, penanda wacana, which is impressive, and which shows that you are actually proficient users of English. Okay, so, uh, but before we move on any further, then let's talk about paragraphing. This is such a simple, uh, a teeny tiny issue about paragraphing because uh, basically you you are already aware that whenever you go into a new question, normally you will have three ideas or, or three points to talk about uh, in the questions. And you always know that when you go to the next one, you uh, insert a new paragraph instead of just cramming everything in just one paragraph okay so that should be a, a good baseline mm -hmm. to start with okay and uh, although we are only giving you like three questions to write then you we are highly suggesting that you also include two additional paragraphs for the introduction and also for the conclusion okay all right, okay, so back on to the conjunctions and also cohesive devices. Okay, remember that I said conjunctions, the kata hubung are quite simple. Okay, and, and normally, although conjunctions, if you actually study this much deeper, conjunctions include the cohesive devices, the linkers, the sequence connectors, and what forth. But we are just going to look at this very generally from two different, uh, in two different perspectives. The first one, linkers, the basic one, uh, as in fanboys, for and nor, but, or, yet, and so. Okay, on the other hand, we also have cohesive devices which are much more complex and give better uh, impression when you use them, okay? We have a lot, right? Okay, uh, this is not everything, okay? The, we have a lot more instead, uh, and this is not everything. So if you actually like spend a few seconds to Google, you can actually find a lot more cohesive devices which are not listed here. But what I would like to highlight here is the fact that um, some students, they are, they know, they are so, so, um, you use cohesive devices, no doubt, but then some students, they tend to use the same functions, mm -hmm. right? Especially if to add ideas. Moreover, besides, other than that, apart from that, uh, what else? Um, and and, and uh, you are using all this in just to be giving ideas. And in mm -hmm. fact, not just one essay, but in one paragraph, you cram like three different cohesive devices for the same purpose, which is to add ideas. So this uh, could actually be a bit dangerous. Why? Because this is uh, overusing. Overusing. Okay. Because although we strongly suggest the use of cohesive devices, we don't want you to be abusing them to the fact that uh, you are actually writing every single sentence with a cohesive device. Because remember, we have we want um, efficient use of cohesive device, not over using cohesive device. As for part one, uh, for you to gain five marks, right? Yep. For organization, it would be to be able to use limited 
Cursive device. Yeah, okay, number. so with the word limited, we believe that if you can actually use just one, that already showcase your ability to use cohesive device in a limited way. Mm -hmm. Okay, and as for part three, which is the hardest, um, we believe uh, it's not just our belief, but it is actually uh, stated that you have to show your ability to use very uh, a variety of cohesive devices effectively okay the keyword there being effectively meaning to say your cohesive devices the ones that you choose to use should actually be um, delivering their functions as cohesive device if it's mm -hmm. meant to contrast then it's to contrast if yeah. it's meant to add idea then to add idea so we have to be careful with that we just don't want you to be uh, pasting and as many cohesive devices as you can but not caring about the quality of the usage yep and you have to remember um, if you're writing a story the set of cohesive devices would be a little bit different because um, when we write stories we don't normally write uh, or use formal or factual you know cohesive devices like um moreover furthermore normally when we write stories we will use things like you know out of the blue mm -hmm. suddenly once in a blue moon for example and there are many more of course mm -hmm. right and the last one under o organization oh Mika, okay. Uh, for the last one, we would like to talk about substitutions. So, in other words, uh, avoiding repetitions, okay? Uh, even since uh, the last format of English, SPM English, uh, repetition in writing is just, it's unavoidable, I know. But this is something that we need to look at, especially when you are doing your part two and also part three article because we tend to actually repeat our subject especially the topic a lot of times and we just don't really pay much attention in terms of uh, changing and replacing them with other words mm -hmm. that mean the same so as an example the bad example given there let's say if we have to talk about a person that we admire uh, then this is just like three sentences and already the candidate has repeated the word my mother three times and this is just three sentences out of the perhaps a hundred sentences that the student is going to write about. Whenever I am asked about the person I admire most, I would easily name my mother. My mother has the kindest soul on earth. I love my mother because she has given me blah, blah, blah. So what will happen is the essay will end up a bit uh, monotonous mm -hmm. due to the repetitions of the same word again and again. Okay, this is one word. Okay, sometimes students also tend to actually uh, repeat a phrase again and again. For instance, the benefit of using smartphone, the benefit of using smartphone. Mm -hmm. So this shows us, although you are actually giving us ideas, but when you repeat yourself a lot, that shows us uh, that you have actually limited proficiency of English mm -hmm. yeah. because you tend to be repeating the words or the sentences that you write. Mm -hmm. Okay, Hence, you have to actually be a bit creative. As long as what you write actually mean the same or refer to the same thing, then it will actually be accepted and we can see how clever you are with your words as well. Okay, I think we also failed to actually address in the beginning that uh, when it comes to SPM, format these days for English, it will all be about your knowledge of vocabulary, okay? So meaning to say we have to always be able to showcase your uh, great and vast vocabulary, mm -hmm. okay? So hence why, again, repetition is totally, uh, should be avoided. Okay, the next one, language. Okay, as for language, uh, that will be the last aspect of our uh, criteria. For language, we have three aspects that uh, will be looked at. First one is being vocabulary. Okay, so that is the most important aspect that uh, will be used by uh, the examiners to give you to what you scores. First of all, it will be based on whether you can use... Uh, based on the type of vocabulary that you are using okay so we have three types of vocabulary the first one being basic second level everyday and the third one is the highest one 
which is less common like cysts. In your words, bombastic words. Okay. So, uh, if you remember, at the beginning, just now, uh, we talked about how uh, we have different levels of English. Mm -hmm. Okay, English levels in terms of CFR. Um, so, we have uh, actually the ones that we didn't mention, A1 being the very basic beginner level of English. Uh, and then we have A2, B1, B2, C1, and C2. So, all words in English, they can actually be categorized in these levels. Okay, and as you know, uh, you we, everybody is aware, the native speakers are going to have the most words. Okay, and those who are just learning the language will be having some, you know, some basic entry level words. So, this is also how we are going to assess you. Okay, so clearly bombastic words are good, but we have to also make sure that what we are using are correctly used and precisely put in our essay. So, uh, for part one, basic words would be sufficient, yeah. right? Okay, if you can use basic words for part one, the short email or the message, the short message or the email, uh, being able to use basic words would suffice. Okay, but as we go on to part two and part three, then we have to showcase our ability to show, uh, to be, to use better words, uh, much less common lexis. Okay, would you like to add anything? Yeah. So, um, I think some of you are wondering about less common le lexis. So, basically, less common lexis are words that we don't normally use in our daily conversation. Like, for example, when you came back from a uh, vacation with your family, you would, you would be telling to your, your friends, I mean, stories uh, of your vacation. You would be saying, like, uh, we stayed at a hotel, uh, at a homestay, at a chalet or resort. Uh, when you write, instead of writing hotel, homestays or chalets, you might want to write accommodation, for example. It is less commonly used in our daily conversation. So when, when we write, that might be considered as a less common lexis. And however, we will also... No, I mean, the examiners will also be looking at the accuracy of the less common lexis that you are using in your essay. So sometimes we can be using good words, but they are not uh, Properly suitable mm -hmm. uh, with the topic that you are writing. Okay. And then only the examiners are going to focus on your grammar. So here they'll be looking for your errors. Um, the single word errors, uh, spelling mistakes, uh, subject verb agreement, and whatnot. Okay, and then the last one would be structures, where I think you are already familiar with this. Um, you are supposed to be able to write simple, compound, and complex sentence structures, where you have to show this and throughout the questions. I mean the parts, part one, part two, and part three you should always uh, show your ability to use all these different sentence structures. So don't get the wrong idea that uh, you have to be using complex sentence structures all the time. No, sometimes the examiners want to see or they would appreciate more if you can show your ability to use, uh, to switch between simple, compound and also complex sentence structures. Yeah, and apart from that, I think uh, it's also worthy uh, to actually check out uh, active voice and passive voice structures as well. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes I think, uh, talking from my experience as a teacher, my students tend to write sentences that begin with uh, subject and verb, subject and verb. So the sentences would be repetitive, the, the pattern. It would be, uh, this is blah, 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 Kamal is blah, 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 the student is blah, blah, blah. So again and again, this is repeated throughout the essay. So this actually caused the essay to be a bit monotonous because uh, we are literally fed with the information. Yeah. Sometimes, especially when you are suggesting an action or uh, giving a recommendation, mm -hmm. uh, what works best is a passive voice because we are actually focusing more onto the action the the activity instead of the doer people mm -hmm. who should be doing it so we're going to talk about that in but uh, later. <laughs> as you as you prepare towards the spm and we we are speaking to a screen here right 
So we, we don't really know your actual levels and there are 129 of uh, students in this Google Meet tonight. So I would suggest if you are still struggling to produce or to write a grammatically correct sentence, okay, you might want to start by strengthening your basic first, which mm -hmm. is the simple sentence structure. So make sure you can write error-free simple sentence structure. Then you move on to compound and also to complex. Okay, actually it's not that difficult yep. to write a complex sentence, okay? Um, in your essay, you just have to make sure to use some of these subordinating conjunctions, like uh, my favorite would be although, because, uh, if, and since. I love to use that in my essays, right? But actually there are more. And when you write, if you can include some of these subordinating conjunctions automatically your sentences would be considered as a complex sentence yeah. okay and um it is uh it is also worth mentioning normally complex sentences will consist of two related um, ideas they should be um interdependent yeah interdependent okay Okay, so uh, what we have been learning at school since primary would be one sentence will be dependent, meaning it is a hanging if it stands by itself, whereby the other sentence is complete, right? Okay, but other than that, if you can digest that, then good for you. Okay, but apart from that, a shortcut would be to simply memorize these keywords and try to precisely put them in your sentences. Okay, so some words to memorize lah. Okay, so the next one that we would like to suggest is this because we notice in in fact with my students they don't plan much because you feel like you have three essays right to write in just one and a half hours so that is clearly not enough mm -hmm. but trust me that uh, perhaps you should give this a go if you plan uh, and by simply listing out your ideas or the words that you would like to use for the essay writing, trust me, that can reduce your thinking time during the writing itself, okay? Because we notice that some students, they tend to uh, not daydream, but uh, they would be pondering in the middle of writing just because they are lost for words and, and just because you can't remember that one word in English, right? Okay, so this, we believe uh, by planning, you can actually help your process of writing to be much smoother. Yep. And mm. stage number two would be composing. This is uh, very easy for most of you guys, right? Uh, however, when you are writing, when, when you begin writing, there's one thing you need to train yourself, which um, stop or, or, or try to avoid uh, putting a full stop too easily or too quickly. So basically, we want to make sure our sentence are uh, of better qualities. Right, so whenever you write your idea, when, when you feel like stopping or putting a full stop, right, ask yourself WH questions like mm. why, where, or when, or even who, for example. So uh, a sample sentence would be, if, if you write an email, I think you should go to Cameron Highlands. Don't stop there, but ask yourself why, because you love uh, strawberries, for example, or because you love to uh, take a lot of uh, good pictures of the natures, mm. uh, of the nature maybe, okay? <laughs> and finally, what we are also proposing is something that you hardly do because there's not enough time or because you don't know what to do, but it is simply the step of improving or in a better word, proofreading. So proofreading is easy. It's just to make sure that you can uh, check the quality of the words mm -hmm. and also the tenses that you use before you finally submit the essay, mm -hmm. okay? So I think even with the littlest time, let's say we have about one or two minutes, what you can do is simply check all the verbs that you use because yeah. these verbs are normally uh, adhering to a certain grammar rules. So if you salah one, uh, the tense, then all the 20 verbs in the essay will also be salah, right? Okay, but we don't want is that, okay? Try to ensure that your grammar, the tenses, is actually um, adhering to the rubric, the, 
the question but if it is about your experience that it should be in past tense simple things teeny tiny little thingy okay and we also will be should be looking at the use of cohesive devices because we want to show that you can use a variety of cohesive device yeah. okay so uh perhaps it is also good that if you could spend one minute to quickly scan your essay to see if you have used uh cohesive devices enough and whether they are precisely used then this can actually help you gain or even secure a good mark for organization mm -hmm. especially okay so don't simply settle with okay i just want to finish and i just want to submit all right so spend two or three minutes on checking oh here it is so <laughs> check your verbs and also check the spelling of proper nouns these days you like mentioning uh samples of social media platforms like facebook TikTok, telegram youtube so make sure that you these are spelled correctly youtube with a with a y and t uh capitalized and so on okay check also your usage of cohesive device whether there is enough okay all right okay so what we have here is a sample essay it's a paragraph all right uh the paragraph is on uh your experience of joining school competition so this is the part two uh, i think what you can do now is take a screenshot and later uh, after our discussion you can actually try and correct them uh, the, this would be a good practice for you to do proofreading mm -hmm. mm. okay take a screenshot first it would be unfair if you take a screenshot of what we have corrected later okay so i think uh we have the time to actually do something interactive uh let's look at a uh, sentence by sentence and maybe later you can actually write the message write the right and sentence the corrected version in the message so that we can see if you know we are getting the hang of this okay the first sentence last year i took part in hk sbp netball competition that is accurate by itself okay so let's try to look at the second one our teams didn't went to any school because our school is the organizer for the competition okay how about that how would you correct that sentence Okay, you uh, you can type um, your correct version of the sentence. So just retype in the chat. It's okay to try. Well, if you don't feel like writing the whole as uh, sentence, you can also just write what is wrong. Uh, yep. So what is right? Okay. Okay, so Hazik is suggesting that the word when should be go. Okay, good. And then another Hazik, <laughs> another Hazik suggests that, okay, it should be our team. Okay, good, good. Razik is also saying that. Good, good eye, good eye. Okay, because it, there is no way that we join uh, a few teams at once, right? Okay, mm -hmm. so good. What else? Uh, okay, is... good. Hayati, betul. Our team didn't go to any school. Mm -hmm. Our school was the organizer. Okay. So Mariam says our team didn't go to any school because our school was the organizer for the competition. Okay, good. Mm. All right. Okay. Okay. You're all on the uh, on the right track. Okay, let's see the correction. Okay. You say go and then schools. Oh my, I left that out. Sorry. That's a very last minute correction. Mm. Our team. Okay, you were right about this one. Okay, it should be our team didn't go to any school because our school. We, okay, I actually changed the word uh, our school to we because mm. we have just written school our, before. We don't want to repeat. Mm, okay, but even if you write our school was the organizer, point, okay, we will accept you. Yeah. Okay, but another better uh, alternative would be because we were the host of the competition. Yep. Do you know the meaning of host? What is the meaning of host? 
Yes, yes. <laughs> Wrong question asked. Okay, host would be Tuan Buma. Okay, so that uh, because we're talking about competition, right? So the word of or organizer or host uh, would be a good register for the topic. Okay, well done, well done. What about the next sentence? Uh, my position was a defender called wing defend. Anybody familiar with netball here? Or are the positions similar to uh, basketball? Mm. Are the names similar? No, this is netball. Yeah. So anyone would like to try to fix this one? My position was a defender called wing defend. So twice the word defend is being used. Maybe the boys are not familiar with <laughs> no. terms, the positions in netball. That makes sense. Okay. Okay. So I'll just show you the correction, okay? Okay, so we simply cut the word, uh, cut the phrase a defender called. Okay, Hayati is suggesting my position was a wing defender. Okay, good. So that means we, you will be uh, getting rid of the mid sentence because it's not necessary, it's repetitive, right? Defender put wing only, I think. Oh, okay, okay. All right, so what? Another word that we corrected, my position was wing defense. defense. Okay. So Remember the uh, noun. Mm, it, 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 it would be a noun instead of a verb defend there. Mm -hmm. And if you have questions why it's C E, not S E, the reason is because the spelling that we will be using for uh, English writing would be British English. Mm -hmm. Okay, the Queen's English. If you also have another question, whether uh, you should be using UK or US English, then uh, actually it does not matter. But you have to be consistent when uh, with the, what do we call, variation that you use. Okay, if you are using for uh, American English, the spelling, uh, some words should also adhere to American spelling instead of uh, American words. Okay. Like whether you should be using uh, trash or that's been it. Uh, okay. So things like that, whether it's lift or elevator. So kena careful kat situ lah. But uh, all books and uh, most materials uh, that we prepare for SVM would be with UK English. All right. The next sentence. We are going, we, should we go quickly? Okay, we corrected that one. We went up or competed or played against other boarding schools across Malaysia. So instead of saying we had a match, which would actually be wrong uh, in terms of meaning because there's no way you just have one match, right? Okay, so we said we went up against other boarding schools across Malaysia. Uh, Flanky, do you have a question? You can ask the question away. Okay, and then another spelling mistake with unforgettable. Uh, and then we won the third place. Um, I simply get rid of the, se the, se the second part of the sentence. So, mm. uh, we already mentioned that it was a competition that you went uh, up against other boarding schools. So this is unnecessary. That is a, a, a huge repetition. Okay, you can simply say it was an unforgettable experience for me because that day we won the third place. That would be sufficient. Okay, and then finally, we were very tired but happy with the result. Okay, there is no other grammatical mistake here. But then if you notice, the words that have been used uh, are quite everyday. Okay, words like tired and happy, emotions are simply uh, replaceable with other better words. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so word like tired, what can you replace tired with? Exhausted. Okay, thank, thank you, you Yam. What about happy? What about happy, anybody? Thank you, dear. A mm. better, better word? Better word for happy. Okay, dear is also exhausted. 
Okay, Haziq is suggesting in a cloud nine. Okay, dia, dia suggestion is good, contented. Mm -hmm. Okay, what about Haziq in a cloud nine? A use of expression, How, what would you say to that? Mm. Yeah, it, it's good to use, but you have to make sure you use it correctly and accurately. Mm. So you have to be careful tau, if you are uh, deciding to use uh, impre apa, expressions or mm -hmm. idioms or uh, this peribahasa thingy in uh, these are normally informal you have to bear that in mind idioms expressions and what forth are uh, they are mostly okay mostly um informal so uh, it would be actually a bit unfitting to use them in part two and also part three okay except if you're writing uh, a review Yep. Or a story. Okay, so kena careful lah. Tak kalah kita, we were very tired but on cloud nine with Teresa, it would sound a bit clumsy, mm. right? Okay, so kena careful. Especially when putting it in a, um, in a, in the set, middle of a sentence. Okay. Uh, we have a few more saturated with happiness. We were joyful. We were overjoyed. We were contented. That's very good. Okay, satisfied. Ecstatic. We were hmm. cheerful. Cheerful tu macam lebih kepada ceria. So, ha, sikit lagi. Okay, hmm. you have to be careful with that. We were delighted. Okay, uh, tired. Okay, um, Emmeline was suggesting fatigue. Okay, kena careful with the spelling je. Okay, fatigue. Good. Very, very good words. Okay, so these are also things that you can do. In the beginning, we will write a very simple sentence. But remember, with that very basic sentence, we can actually change that, transform that into a much better mm -hmm. sentence. Okay. Yeah, we have a question. Dog tired. <laughs> hmm. Um, the use of expressions. Lah. Mm. Hmm. How would you say to that? I, I would feel like or dog tired is quite appropriate because it's a one word but i'll take a look at that okay okay proceed with uh, writing part one all right so for part one it's fairly easy for most of you mm -hmm. actually um yeah mm. what do you say the word dog tired is informal so for part two two uh we would not really yeah. recommend the use of informal expressions remember when i talk about communicative achievement you want mm. to follow the correct convention depending on the questions that you are answering so if you want to use that dog tired in part one in email i i, I don't see any problem with that mm, because mm, mm, when you mm. write email you can be very informal with your friends right mm. and um but when you switch on to part two or when you move on to part three for example something more formal so i would try to avoid using some um some informal expressions especially mm. right although part two sometimes it sounds a bit informal because mm -hmm. uh they would ask about uh perhaps your experience or uh, your ideas your opinions right so it it would actually lead us to write uh our personal opinion or our mm -hmm. personal uh experience yeah. with the use of pronoun i can mm -hmm. okay so we have to actually be a bit careful because it regardless of what question is it part two and part three are meant to be formal, formal. more formal than part one uh, more formal than part one so we have to avoid being friendly and personal yep. okay okay so, let's get to uh, part one let's continue with part one part one is going to be very simple the questions in the email that you receive normally would be very straightforward okay so um you just need to identify the questions that you need to answer and for each of the idea you have to try to provide elaboration for each answer it is not compulsory but since we are all aiming to get 20 for email since it is the easiest right so try to we just have to try our best and then uh, use suitable and accurate vocabulary relating to the topic and also create some fun details about the recipient to help uh, illustrate your points better okay so let's jump to the sample question should like to do this one or the next one uh i don't mind any okay no, it's this one, eh? so let's mm. just use this one you receive an email from your pen pal joanne okay 
uh, for who is yes, asking for your suggestion. Hi, Dad said he would take me on a trip this school holiday. Where do you think I should go? How much will the trip cost and what can I do there? Okay. And then uh, we have one question with, uh, from Anif Irfan. Cikgu writing, kalau lebih dari perkataan dia akan tolak ke markah nanti. No. Uh, in in real SPM, the examiners will not be uh, penalizing your marks if you write longer than the words required. Okay. Uh, however, you should make sure you are not writing less uh, than the words required. Uh, biasanya kalau kita tulis pendek, there are things that we have not uh, explained uh, fully. Okay. Hmm. So back to our question in part one here in the email. So the, the questions, the three questions are fairly straightforward, right? So the first one, where? Where do you think I should go? And then how much will the trip cost? It's, so it's about price. And the last one is in terms of activity that can be done there, right? So this hmm. is our sample email, all right? I just want to show you how we can be crafty. We can be a little bit creative when writing email, okay? I know some of you are wondering why this email uh, begin with this sentence. Dia tak tanya, how are you, right? I hope you are in the ping of hell. Okay, that's because those are not uh, necessary, okay? When we reply to emails, we can go straight to the point, right? So I can't be happier for you. That is a very friendly expression. Remember, when we reply uh, our uh, the emails, we want to be friendly, right? So go to Bali. I have visited Bali before and I would be more than glad to go again if I had the chance. I'm sure you will love it too. Truthfully, uh, there's an uh, informal cohesive device there, but it's acceptable. The tickets can be quite pricey, but you can save a lot if you can get your hands on them during promotion. However, all right, that is another cohesive device. Don't worry about your expenses there, okay? You, uh, considering delicious street food is inexpensive and there are plenty of budget hotels too. Generally, it may cost about RM2000 for a week-long trip with your parents. While planning your itinerary, don't forget to include a visit to the infamous monkey forest and Ubud, in Ubud and watching sunset at Uluwatu Temple. I can't wait to like your Instagram post. Wow, that's mouthful. Okay, so uh, when we look at this sample sentence, all ideas are actually fully informative. It is stating the place, it is stating the cost, and it is uh, also suggesting two activities there. Okay, so in terms of content, we can clearly award five for content, right? And then let's look at communicative achievement. What do you think when you read this? Does it sound like a proper email or it's not like an email? Ah, what do you think? Is it friendly or not? Yes or no? I think, I think, yeah, Hazik said yes. Okay, so this email is very friendly, right? And it sounds like a proper email. Okay, so in terms of communicative achievement, there's nothing wrong with that. However, let's look at the choice of words here. So the topic, the main topic is about uh, vacation or going uh, or traveling somewhere, right? So we have words like the name uh, of the place, Bali, and then the word tickets. Of course, when you are traveling, you will be considering the price of the tickets. And then the word pricey, okay? Promotion, uh, street food, um, expenses, budget hotels. And these are all related to the topic going on a holiday with your family. So in terms of register, this is actually very, very good. It is, uh, most of the words are very topically related. In terms of cohesive devices, organization, right? We have truthfully, we have however, we have generally. So uh, it is well organized, it is, it is good. And the cohesive devices are actually spot on, okay? They are used well. So last, uh, in terms of language, we have some less common lexis here. Uh, for example, the word uh, itinerary. Uh, while planning your itinerary, itinerary is uh, considered as less common lexis there. Because when you talk, when you converse, when you speak to your friends in your daily conversation, you don't, you do, you don't say the word uh, itinerary when uh, we went holiday. No, 
you would say the activities that we did uh, for example so itinerary maksudnya adalah um, jadual perjalanan. perjalanan or like rancangan perjalanan sama macam tentatives okay mm. so this is a perfect 20 out of 20 for email so it's not too difficult right okay well we have a question there cikgu writing eh no not that one uh teacher if the spelling is wrong does the examiner will cut the mark or not uh, uh we have one question the neural host now asks okay uh what was the question if the spelling is wrong mm. does the examiner will cut the mark or not okay i think uh if it is glaring and it is happening too much throughout mm. the emails maksudnya kalau dalam email you there were there are more you know like five six times that you spell words wrongly that would affect your mm. mark for language for email if it's just a one or two word uh two mistakes or mm -hmm. simple mistakes yeah. can uh like uh, missing s mm. uh, we would actually be able to tell from the other uh, accurate sentences or other attempts that you are actually proficient users even though there are slight mistakes like you know missing s or missing certain spelling yeah okay so of course just because you are making a little mistake that does not mean or that does not simply mm. tell us that okay you are weak at english nope okay we don't simply penalize no. but we would also look at uh what you can do yeah okay so if, if it's just a simple uh spelling mistake like missing a, an s a letter like teacher mentioned earlier uh, the examiners will consider it as a slip uh, so it's not a major error okay mm -mm. right and then aisha has another question there the teacher macam mana nak form untuk communicative to okay communicative achievement uh just make sure you follow the format okay the, the correct format and then make sure you brainstorm the words you you just a teacher mentioned about planning so when you plan before you write any essays think of words related to the topic okay and then make sure the ideas are conveyed uh straightforward to the examiners or to your readers that's the tips okay and then Amalin asked about oral. Okay, oral. We will go to oral. We will go to speaking later, uh, a little bit more. And then, uh, how can I improve my vocab? Uh, there's no shortcut. You have to read a lot. You have to uh, do, you know, semantic practices with your friends in your class. Uh, just come up with any topic. For example, okay, mm. let's say the topic brainstorm. is sports. Now, let's brainstorm maybe 20 words related to sports and then change the topic vacation change the topic family or friendship for example that's how you improve your vocab yep. okay i think we can move on they are should we go to part two or should we go to speaking honestly one hour and a half is not enough for us to actually cover everything mm -hmm. uh, but uh from what we understand there will be uh, other series okay so hopefully we can cover more parts okay so what say you should we go to part two writing or should we go to speaking right away okay we have other uh questions you got yes aisha vocab it would be uh mark under the aspect of language okay let's go to part two we have a few other questions here okay now when the moment you move on to part two you have to remember that formal it's no longer informal so that means we have to spell everything uh, individually let's try to avoid contraction uh, at our best okay no longer she is he is don't uh, won't so spell everything uh, individually do not will not fully okay and don't use uh, slang words as well i'm yeah. gonna wanna and especially the sms words omg fyi rn fr so don't use this yeah okay? okay so first of all i think it's also worth your time to look at the tenses why because you will be given three questions to uh three points to elaborate so mm -hmm. sometimes one of the questions can actually be uh 
asking you to use a different tense. For instance, if they ask you to write about experience, then you should bear in mind that it's not going to be present tense, but it should entirely be in past tense. Okay, so be careful. But then the next question may be asking you to write about benefits. So we have to revert back to com present tense and also perhaps future tense. Okay, so be careful. It Look at the question carefully and determine the tenses that you need to use. And then uh, remember that we also need to look at your the quality of your idea development here, meaning to say uh, sometimes um, you tend to actually give us a lot of ideas. For instance, let's say you have to talk about benefits of smartphones to students. So sometimes students like to give us like five benefits, but then these benefits don't have elaborations. So this is what we call as mere listing. Mm. Okay, so no development, no elaboration. So that is something that you need to look at okay so let's look at a sample question all right so these are the questions so uh if you notice the main topic um of this question is about your experience joining school competition. oh let's look at the second one we change the question <laughs> okay so this one um your classmates have been discussing spending holiday wisely since okay we are uh, going to have a long holiday in two weeks in, in two weeks your teacher has asked you to write uh, an essay about the topic okay the three points are given a holiday activity that benefits students why we should spend holiday wisely one way to educate teenagers on spending holiday wisely okay right so first of all we spend around one to two minutes can you give me uh, give us uh, write down some words that came uh, that come to your mind when we look at the topic spending holiday wisely like maybe you can give some suggestions in terms of activity first like what kind of activities that we can do during the school holiday what would you like to do in yep. two weeks anyway, time for the two weeks minute. holiday just one minute apart from studying lah. anyone Anyone? Can you suggest uh, some activities that you would love to do during the school holiday? Yeah, just write, write it down. Uh, exercise, okay, Farid said, okay. Uh, anyone else? Anything? Going on a vacation, fly, <laughs> okay. Yoga, Yoga, travel, fishing, shopping, sleep, okay. So these Ooh, are all very like good. Uh, we have uh, I guitar, uh, reading. Okay, so these are all very good. Okay, so let's choose a few. Let's talk about maybe uh, shopping, for example. Okay, so when you decide in the in the examination, okay, kita bayangkan situasi exam. So you have decided to to write about shopping, right? So of course you might know some words you have to write or include some words related to shopping right so for example apa dia apa dia words related to shopping ah related to shopping of course okay. okay so we can uh say shopping complex we can write uh vouchers we can write, uh, what, what are the words? What do we call the person waiting at the counter? Hmm. Uh, we have the word cashier, very good. Purchase, discounts, customers, um, sale. Okay, so these are the words related to shopping. Very good, thank you everyone. So if you write about fishing, for example, okay, I would love to take fishing uh, as another example, since I love fishing, right? So when we write fishing, when we write about fishing, of course, we want to include words like the fishing rod, uh, amaling. Very good, spot on, you read my mind. Uh, and then we have the word fish. What about the baldi, numbers in English? So, apa dia? Uh, patience, very good. Baits, bucket, mariam, very good. Uh, what about the place where we keep the fish after we catch them? Ha. Huh. Uh. <laughs> baldi is bald. Okay, then maybe 
you can talk in the about fridge. <laughs> in the fridge. No, we don't bring the fridge. <laughs> polystyrene is the fridge that you cook already. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's the poly. Ice what box. do we call so that? Okay, that. the ice box. Uh, the ice box. Very good. <laughs> And then you can also talk about the place that you will go to fish, right? Oh, Lake, yep. River, stream, or, or perhaps even the, the one ocean. that you pay. Yeah. What do you call that? Uh, a fishing center. <laughs> no. Sounds legit. Uh, okay, and then you might want to include some, like maybe speedboat, a boat, for example. All right. So very good. These are all very good. And we have some words mm -hmm. here. Okay. So. Uh, <laughs> The words are, okay, when we talk about holiday, we have words like let hair down, travel uh, itinerary, unwind, take time off boats, okay? Uh, uh, books. Off books, sorry. <laughs> no, I was reading the question. No, Hayati said banana boat. So fishing, not take related to Take time off books, banana. yeah. Take time off So books. take time off books, beneficial pa pastime, all right? Uh, hustle and bustle of the city, for example. And these are all very much related to the topic, spending, holiday, all right? So, um, just memorize a few, okay? And make sure you... You can simply take a screenshot. Yeah, you can, mm, you can simply take a screenshot. But you see, for, it's, there is no way that we know all the words in the world. Mm. All the words in the, <laughs> world, in the world, okay? So, you have to actually look at us trying to find words about fishing so this is something that is actually normal mm -hmm. but if you are curious about something go venture the internet explore the internet and learn as many words as you can okay and remember write about things that you are familiar with only okay so now this is what we say about uh, how your basic sentence can actually be transformed into uh, sentences that are worth five star, mm -hmm. five marks lah in our case, right? Mm -hmm. So, for instance, the first sentence, this would make a good introduction, yeah? Mm -hmm. Everyone is excited about holiday, including students and even retired people. This is because they can take a break from everyday job and routine. Yep. People are busy making money and getting all A's at school, but they should rest before continuing striving for success in life. Yeah. First sentence, simple. Second sentence, simple. Third sentence, mm, compound. compound. Okay. Okay, so this is what teacher has written and this is what I have hey, written. No okay. way. <laughs> so the one in colorful words. Uh, this are mine. mine. Okay. So let's see. The idea... The ideas there for this introduction paragraph, they remain the same. Masih idea yang sama. Tapi the way we presented this idea, now it has changed. By just changing the words that we want to use. So, kita tengok uh, sentence by sentence. The first one. Um, holidays are literally awaited by all. Students, workers and even retirees. So, now it sounds a little bit better bila kita banding dengan yang sebelah kiri tadi. Because... Dalam uh, sebelah kiri yang teacher baca tadi, it, it says uh, even retired people. Now in this one, we know the exact word, uh, even retiree. So it, it will be better. Mm. And then sentence number two, why? It is a time when common daily routine halts. Uh, there's a good vocabulary there. Halts, maksudnya berhenti, stop. And makes way for a less restricting uh, schedule. Okay. And then, next sentence, we have despite being overwhelmed by work or academic commitments, everyone should take a break before resuming the mundane routine of meeting deadlines and completing assignments. So here, we have one uh, cohesive device. Since this is part two, we should grab all the opportunities that we have to use cohesive devices. Okay, so introduction uh, is a good please to to start or to begin using uh, cohesive devices already mm -mm. Okay. especially with the word despite i just love using it you just have to talk about two contradicting ideas but mm. to put despite there right okay uh, so perhaps it's a good uh, method to uh, practice to use one cohesive device per paragraph mm -hmm. we'll have about five paragraphs if mm -hmm. you can use five then that's clever enough okay and this is also a good practice if you have gotten your SP, no trial uh, papers marked by your teachers, right? Ha, uh, go through the essays again and think about how can you improve your sentences or your essays. Change like from this left to the right hand side. Yep. Uh, do this, okay? I think we should move on to part three now. Huh. Do you need to put a title for no, the essay? Yeah. No, Aslan, it's, it's not compulsory. 
Uh, normally, not for we, part two. Lah. Not for part two. For, for part two, definitely no. We don't have to include any title. But when you write article or report, of course, it is good to include the title. Okay. Okay. All right. So, uh, are we going to do part three or what about speaking? Tips for part three. Okay, we're going to do tips for part three. For part three, so sorry, but we won't have the time to do it in detail. But basically, we'll tell you some do's and don'ts for uh, part three writing. But if uh, we get to see you again, uh, then perhaps we can focus on each uh, part, can yeah. each each genre. So we have a question first before uh, before we continue. It's from Hazik Danish. Um, uh, what are the differences between complex and compound sentences? Okay, so has it compound sentences are uh, only using uh, coordinating conjunctions mm. like so, uh, and, and for, but that's nor. all. But yeah. when you write complex sentences, the ideas are interdependent. Compound sentences, they are the dua idea. However, the ideas don't have to be interdependent. Maksudnya saling bergantung antara satu sama lain. It could be merely uh, an addition. All right. And then Dia asks, if you don't mind, could you share a few interesting idioms that we can, we all can use in our writing? Oh, okay. Teacher has a lot of idioms. <laughs> Husna, um, where can I get those questions and the notes? Wow. Huh. How do we <laughs> how do we respond to that? Uh, I think we can share the part one and part two questions code mm. uh, in the one in MOOC group later. Mm, later. Yeah. Okay. Right. Mm. So back to this part three. Okay. Um, so for writing a story, I know most of you love to write a story, but you need to know when you write a story, you have to decide on the number of characters and settings first. It's not a good idea to include a lot of uh, to, or too many characters too many people in your in your story okay and then you also need to decide on a plot the plot should be very clear there should be a beginning uh, a conflict and also ending. oh, talk. oh the, why oh i forgot to share again sorry uh no, coming it's, up it's soon technical issue, eh? okay, so allowing you... me to share does it work okay it's working is it working now? Can okay. You see? Okay. All right. So, so back to story. Back to story. Okay. Decide on the plot. It should be clear. What is the beginning of the story? What is the conflict of the story? And what is the ending of the story? So you, when you write a story, you have to make sure your story is complete. Maksudnya, mesti ada ending. You cannot leave your story hanging. Tak kira lah. You don't have enough time ke apa semua. You still have to finish it. Because if your story is hanging, the mark will also be hanging, right? Yeah. And then don't, uh, an advice from me, don't end your story with a sentence like, it was just a dream. Make sure, if possible, try to write logical ending for your story. And one more thing, jangan kalau tak cukup masa, tiba-tiba awak tulis, um, to be continued, okay? That's a no-no, all right? And then, um, when you write stories, you cannot run away from using a lot of adjectives, yaitu kata sifat. Because adjectives and adverbs are what helps to inject uh, emotion in your story, okay? And most of the time, when you write story, you are using past tense, except when you are using dialogue dengan apa tu? pengikat kata, kan? Okay, so, however, the dialogue, should you choose to uh, include any dialogue in your story, it, it is supposed to be minimal and purposeful. You cannot be writing a lot of dialogues yang bila uh, kita baca, uh, we don't feel, we don't find any purpose with that. Okay? Mm. And uh, students tend to write a dialogue and then explain it. For instance, good morning, I greeted my mother in the kitchen. Mm. You don't have to say, I greeted my mother again because that is actually represented by the phrase good morning too. Yeah. So that is something that you have to be careful mm -hmm. because otherwise it would again uh, cause monotonous uh, yeah. tone. Okay? Mm. And remember, for every single sentence that you write, you have to make sure that they are purposeful. Okay, okay. every single one. And this is the sample technique. Okay, I just want to show this. 
I woke up early that morning to get the convention when you write a narrative, a story. Eh? Um, it was finally winter break, not only thankful that classes and assignments were over, but also for the good time I was about to have. And, but the technique is different. It doesn't sound factual uh, and it contains a lot of embedded ideas where only the readers will be able to imagine the situation or the settings of the story. Uh, I woke up early that morning, bangun awal, absolutely light. Dalam keadaan yang very happy. It was finally winter break. Winter break maksudnya, um, it, musim it's, sejuk. It's a, yeah, musim sejuk. So it's a key word, it's not happening in Malaysia. So it's somewhere overseas, right? Not only thankful that classes and assignments were over. There is another key there, uh, telling that the main character is a student. Sebab dia tahu classes and assignment. So when we write story, we, we don't want to be writing too much in details. Sometimes we want to, uh, we want the examiners to, to uh, get the embedded idea so, so they can imagine the story themselves. Okay, so can we move on to article? article. Where is it? Yeah, okay, now an article. Um, this would actually be a good escape if you don't know what question to write for part three. Uh, if there is an article, it, it's quite a safe way because uh, article is similar to uh, the tone of part two. Part three is just like article, right? Minus a, a title. Mm -hmm. Okay, but for this one, remember, try to remember to actually write the title and as well as the author, your name. Mm -hmm. Write a legit one lah. You don't have to write your actual name if you don't like that. But... Um, Try to give a name that is legit, okay? So, and then plan your answers, okay? Sometimes uh, some bullet points will require you to give more than one point, okay? Try to adhere to that. And uh, one good tip is that you should stick to using we and us as the mm -hmm. pronouns to make sure that your article will sound more reader-friendly because yeah. you are students and you are writing for students to read. So that means it would be you, we. Kita, okay, just like in Bahasa Melayu, when you write article, we would be using kita, kita, kita. Yeah. So just like that, in English, we will be using we and also us. So what we always see is students are uh, mixing or or forgetting who they are by actually putting sometimes we and then you and then tiba-tiba they pull up. So that will tell us that you are not uh, checking your answers and that you are not being uh, consistent with the pronouns that you use. Okay, so you have to be careful with that. Okay. So we have one question from Muhammad Azlan. Teacher, what cost to being millionaire? Um, I'm sorry, we don't understand that question. Okay, so when you write a review, it is actually a, a good choice because review is a opportunity. Uh, it's an opportunity criticize. for you <laughs> to criticize or to, to comment. Give positive mm. comments about something that you you like for example if you are asked to write a review about a book so or a movie a place or a restaurant perhaps you can decide whether you want to be giving a positive review or a negative review okay and then uh, you can also decide your own subject what movie which movie which book which restaurant that you want to review okay However, when you write a review, remember, don't write a super long overview. We don't want to know about the subject. We don't want to know too much about the movie or the book, right? We want mm. to know, I mean, the examiners want to know what you like about it, what you dislike about it, what is the X factor of the movie, for example. Okay, when you write a review, remember to be persuasive. Maksudnya, the language that you use should be um, meyakinkan lah. Convincing. Uh, okay, it should sound convincing. Mm. Thank you for that. Okay. And last but not least, when you write a review, make sure to use the word recommend at the end. Okay. So it's clear whether you recommend or not recommend uh, or you don't recommend it to your friends or to the readers. All right. I think we can move on to part three. Uh, to yeah. paper three, sorry. Because not many people like report, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk about part three. We have about, we have a few minutes, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll, we'll make two lah. Yep. Okay, 
for speaking, I know you are nervous, but this is just going to take 13 minutes of your life. One, three, 13. Mm. So even if you are shy, nobody has ever heard your voice. Only three people will hear your voice on mm. that day. So don't be so uh, freaked out about it. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Do it well because speaking, it is 24 marks, right? Absolutely. And that 24 marks is going to contribute to 25% of your overall SPM score. So that means that one mark is literally one point, point something something mm. for your SPM. So if you get 20 marks for your whole mm. speaking test, it is like you already get uh 21. 20 marks for your whole english paper so mm -hmm. you just need to find 50 60 percent more to score a minus or a solid all right so um this is the sitting arrangement i think everyone knows this so mm -hmm. we don't have to talk about that right so there are four different uh criterias uh, that will be assessed during a speaking test so first of all the interlocutor your own teacher will be looking at your overall spoken performance which is going to be related to your ability to comprehend or to understand uh, the question, the the and of course you need to respond to the questions to show that you understand the question okay and then grammar assessor on the other hand um and then assessor on the other hand will assess grammar vocabulary and communicative competence in terms of grammar um you want to make sure the quality of your sentences. So if, uh, for example, if you're answering in short sentences most of the time, they are not going to be good or to, going to be award you a lot of marks. Lah. So for example, what is your hobby? Fishing. What is your favorite food? Um, fr fried rice. So that is not good enough. You want to uh be answering or responding in a very long or complete sentences okay and then in terms of grammar also you want to make sure you use correct grammar lah. so if the question is asking you about uh past uh experience uh, for example like aslan said they adopted a bird that is a good choice of tense lah. so you you have to use past tense right so um be aware of the questions if it's about something that has happened past tense if it's mm -hmm. something present then present tense okay and then last but not least in terms of grammar remember to use cohesive devices if you want to get full mark for grammar cohesive devices is compulsory in speaking as well right and then uh, element number three would be vocabulary so vocabulary will relate to your uh precise uh, how precise can you be when you want to convey uh what you are talking about yep. okay for example if you talk about an event during sports day you need to know the the exact name of the event don't be talking about last year i participated in sports day at my school and i won uh, a gold medal in one event uh you know the event where you run 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 and then you jump uh, that is that is not good right so you have to show your uh knowledge in terms of the precise words that you can use to to convey yourself or, or to to make yourself understood by the assessor and interlocutors and then uh, element number three would be communicative achievement okay in terms of communicative achievement it will relate to how spontaneous can you be so you want to be answering spontaneously you don't want to be hesitating too much uh, like, what is your opinion about online shopping um i think uh, uh, so um it's good uh, that is hesitation that doesn't sound very spontaneous right okay and then communicative competence also refers to how you can sustain the discussion so when your friends ask something when your partner asks something you want to respond to it and if possible to contribute to the discussion as well so keep the discussion going okay right okay so uh, this is what sir has mentioned just now okay try to give a uh, full sentence respond in full sentence instead of uh just giving a direct answer a one yeah. or two words only mm -hmm. okay so uh from what we have observed you're going to be 
uh, talking about your favorite something something of your favorite a lot okay your routine or perhaps your hobby your favorite food and whatnot so look into other ways of mentioning uh, of uh, showcasing the idea of like for instance enjoy appreciate uh, cherish find something appealing that something is your cup of tea and whatnot okay very i know it, it this this may be a bit complicated for you because uh, it's something that uh, something spontaneous something that cannot be planned something that yeah. cannot be written okay but with practice trust us okay you can actually nail your speaking test mm -hmm. well so as you go to part two, remember that uh, the questions are all something very relatively, yep. uh, easily relatable to life as teenagers or even students, okay? Basically, you may need to share experience, mm -hmm. your opinions, your feelings about something. Uh, some questions that we have observed would include favorite fruit uh, or holiday, destination uh, what you wish to do while waiting for your spm results mm. some some easy stuff okay so try to nail your part too remember that you are going to talk up for about one minute so when you are given the 20 seconds to plan plan and use it wisely don't freak out and don't mm. like you know think of the th other things apart from the points that you can see and also try to avoid um rehearsing the sentence yeah don't memorize sentences because the moment you finish the sentence you will be uh, actually searching and grasping for words mm -hmm. and we don't want that to happen instead think about uh, perhaps five words that you can use to help you explain your points and then mm -hmm. when it is finally your turn to speak then only you develop the idea based uh, your your sentences based on the five idea yeah okay Okay. So this is a sample question for part two, where individually you will get different topic. Uh, so the challenge here for part two is uh, not the topic. It is actually something very simple, right? And straightforward. But the challenge here is uh, you are only given 20 seconds to prepare for this one. So my tips are to only think about the ideas during that 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. Do not worry about um you know com the complete sentence yeah okay when you have to start talking then only you produce the language to make sure you deliver your uh, your speech well right <laughs> okay uh what about uh whether i think some students may have the questions uh of mm. whether they need to answer all questions what if the mm don't finish in time meaning they, they are still talking mm -hmm. uh, when the uh, interlocutor finally stopped them mm. does that mean something bad is going to happen meaning will they be penalized for talking too much mm, no. okay um don't worry about talking too much what but worry about talking less talking right? too little uh, talking too little so for example here you are given four uh, bullet points to talk about so if you don't have enough time to finish all the four bullet points you can just um, uh, maybe talk about two or three bullet points and there's nothing wrong with that okay all right and last one is part three so for part three you are going to get a bubble map uh, like this um, the main topic will be in the middle and you are going to share six points to discuss with your partner throughout the uh, part three where mm -hmm. you will be discussing. Lah. Okay, the challenge here is not the topic as well, but it's how you conduct the discussion. You have to remember it is a discussion where you will be agreeing or disagreeing and then you will passing be turn. Uh, passing turn or interrupting when your partner is talking because you are discussing you are not taking turns you are not okay now you start first and then my turn no mm. that is taking turn yeah, it's not like the presentations that you no, do in class no, it, it, where you do your own part okay it shouldn't be like a presentation it should be like you are really discussing about this a conversation okay. um ah, we have questions there what mm -hmm. if the idea doesn't come out and we stay quiet for a bit do we lose marks here uh that is that is called hesitation like you are thinking of what to say right and of course it affects your communicative achievement and also your overall spoken performance tapi 
if you just be quiet for a bit like for one two seconds so that, five ten nothing. seconds uh, and then yeah oh uh, yeah there's nothing wrong with that uh should we if you be quiet for like one or two seconds so it's, it's not uh too bad okay so you don't worry if you like um okay uh, then you continue so it's, it's just Fluently, pausing yeah okay then that, um, don't worry about it uh dia is asking the differences between can and could uh first of all can and could can actually be differentiated in terms of the uh, tenses mm -hmm. can would be in uh would be more commonly used mm -hmm. in present tenses whereby could is what we would replace can with for past tense past okay sense. another one is could is a more polite words uh to use when you are requesting for help or if you are asking questions mm, so uh yep can is uh, when we talk about the level of politeness then can would be more firm like mm. can you help me that means you really want somebody to help you but yep. if you are asking could you help me then you are just hoping but not really forcing that person to help mm. you yeah okay, it's so, also more polite mm. to say could mm. okay okay back to back discussion. to part three you're right so you need to know how to interrupt your partner right uh for example you you have to say <laughs> lightly uh excuse me can i say something can i ask something for example uh sorry to interrupt but i just need to ask about this uh, contohnya okay uh, and also when you agree or disagreeing with your partner please if possible don't simply say i agree with you i agree with you i agree with you change your phrases uh, maybe you can uh, that's uh, absolutely i like your idea we share the same idea i think we are on the same page for example okay mm -hmm. and then when you disagree for example you have to disagree politely as well you cannot say below your partner tanya um what is the do you agree with me uh, don't simply answer no i cannot agree with you because i hate you for example <laughs> don't do that you have to be polite uh, no i'm sorry i have my own uh idea my own stand for example okay just keep it professional continue the discussion All right um what what we are trying to actually help the students with is uh for you to realize that mm -hmm. when it's agreeing and disagreeing it's not just about saying whether you yes i agree or no i disagree okay mm -hmm. uh try to um, comment on the idea before you simply move on mm -hmm. okay can we do a quick example mm -hmm. talk about a wise shopper you choose one and then I'll, i will show a good way of agreeing Mm. Okay. Right. okay let's, let's, do, let's do a simulation yeah uh, in my opinion one way to be a wise shopper is to prepare a two buy checklist before we go to the shopping complex this will help us to stay within the budget and buy only the things that we needed do you agree with me yes Shafiq, i absolutely agree with you in my experience whenever i have a checklist of things that i need to buy I will not be overspending. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I bet that uh, we should compare prices so that we can shop wisely. Mm -hmm. This is so that uh, we get to choose a product that is within our budget and mm -hmm. perhaps at the cheapest price instead of simply buying it at uh, a price that is not discounted. Mm -hmm. What say you? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think this happened to me. Whenever I want to buy my gaming stuff, I will compare the prices first because uh, there are many sellers on Shopee and Lazada and their prices are different. So I always compare because I want to save my money and I don't want to be scolded by my wife. <laughs> so that's, okay. that's how you contribute <laughs> to each other. So basically, okay. don't just say, yeah, that's a good idea. Now it's my turn. Don't do that. If possible, try to give Contribute. some contribution. Mm. Okay. So we have a lot too. of questions. Uh, teacher, if I'm our partner don't I'm... want to talk, is it the examiners will cut my mark? So no. If your partner don't want to talk, his or her mark will, will be, be affected. Affected, not, not your mark. So you just do your part. You just keep talking, yep. keep uh, asking questions. For example, don't worry about your mark. If you have a partner who talks a lot, then you don't. Mm. The good mark will go to her or him. But if you get a partner who doesn't talk about at all, then the bad mark will go to her or him also. Mm. Because your marks are given not according to your level uh, as a pair, yeah, your yeah. performance as a pair. It is it's based individual. on individual performance. Mm. Okay. okay. 
And then one more question. If we feel confidence but the ideas are wrong, do we still get the marks by any chance? Hmm. Uh, if, if you... What if they sound, ask you to talk about games and then the student instead talk about no, sports? No, no. That, that, hmm. You see, the earlier I, I, I explained to you the differences between the marking, right? So if you sound very confident but you are not answering the question, your ideas are wrong. So overall, spoken performance will be affected. Nampak tak? Dia ada pemakahan yang spesifik. So, try to be confident and at the same time, your ideas should Answering be correct the as well. Be but the let's say time. lah, let's say uh, you misunderstand the task, mm. kan? Mm. Uh, your teacher, the interlocutor will be actually try to redirect you onto yeah, yeah. the right mm. uh, path balik. They are going yes. to like help you, prompt you to mm. talk about the topic instead of straying away. Okay, yes. so don't, don't, don't worry, worry lah. Mm. Mm. And if our partner didn't talk in the discussion part, how is it? Okay, if during the discussion, your partner refused to, to join your discussion, right? Don't worry, just keep asking questions. Do you want to talk about this, for example? If she keeps on being mm. quiet, you just continue, okay? Just don't worry about that, right? So I think we are at the end of our session here. Maybe if you have one or two more questions, anyone? And that would be the last Mm. Let's say lah, your partner refuses to talk, kan? Mm. Uh, just try to prompt again and again. Yes. Tafik, what do you think about this? Mm. Tu pun senyap lagi. Then you can actually try asking her, uh, him again by giving a much more specific uh, prompt by asking, uh, have you ever compared prices? Did you mm. look at several stores before buying something? Mm. So let's say your partner finally can talk. Thanks to your contribution, thanks to your prompting, then you are certainly going to be merited for that because mm -hmm. you are able to sustain the discussion. Yeah. But let's say if he still keeps quiet, then uh, just just proceed like, mm. uh, just do your part, okay? Yes. Uh, you are going to get your marks, the mark that you deserve. All right. So I think there's no more question. No other questions, is it? So we are we're supposed to stop. <laughs> uh, Hazik asks, can we use that's all at the end? Of course, Hazik. Of course, of course. can say course. that's all at the end of this. Discussion. The conversation is something informal. I mean, not to the fact, to, to the level that you are discussing as in gossiping couple, but yeah. you don't have to be, it has to stay polite, yes, but not very formal that, oh, thank you, the Mr. Paris, Shafiq, uh, uh, and whatnot. What if both, okay? both of us? don't uh, know the meaning of it. Yes, like Dia said, you can ask for repetition or explanation from mm -hmm. your interlocutor. So, contohnya, teacher, can you explain this word? I don't understand this word. Uh, so, the interlocutor will try his or her best to help. Uh, but, of course, he or she, the interlocutors are not allowed to explain the meanings in Malay, for example. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we have Amna. Can my partner whisper to me the meaning from the task? Okay. Uh, she, your partner can do that in part three during the discussion. But in part two, when you are preparing, it's individual. Uh, your partner is not allowed to help you at all. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's supposed to be individual. And then question for Wei Shui. Sorry for being off topic. For review, can we like make our own movie? Yes, of course, you can create your own movie. Yeah. So in your review, you can even be the director of the movie, all right? Because the examiners, not, uh, they are not going to Google, is it? Like if uh, it's a legit uh, Yeah, one. if it really exists or not, the movie. Okay, so it's up to you. It's up to your own creativity. We don't assess you for the subject matter. Yeah. Okay. However, mm. try to be uh, logical. Uh, mm, don't write something to fiction and it doesn't sound real okay keep it uh keep it real <laughs> all right any more question no more right paris if if you don't know the meaning especially for part three can uh there are six bullets right Mm. So just just try to avoid that one. It's not compulsory that you actually cover three bullet points each. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, no other questions? Okay, if you have no more questions, I think that would be the end of our session. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having us. And we are very sorry if there are anything 
um, that is wrongly said okay mm. ataupun we if we don't have enough time to answer all everything. your questions okay so we are very sorry and please scan the qr code okay and uh, give us some feedback if you like it now i mean this session right teacher yeah so all the best for your real spm and you know do your best mm. get an a nail it all right you're welcome everyone have a good night's sleep <laughs>